For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingeman. Welcome to another edition of the uh, Focus program. My name is Paul Dingeman. Focus appears in Marine City, St. Clair, each Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Now also in uh, Port Huron on uh, Thursdays and Fridays. We're glad that you are along. Two very interesting segments today for you. There's an event that's two events that are coming up. Uh, one is at the end of the month, and it's called Whistles on the Water, the weekend of the uh, 30th of September. And uh, the representatives from there are going to be with us in just a second. But let's begin today's show with some representatives from Taste Fest 2017. Dr. H. Lee Bachelor. Hello, the Paul. Chief Medical Officer of St. John River District Hospital, and Kim Ronish, did I pronounce it right? Ronish. Ronish, uh, Vice President of Nursing and Operations. Welcome. Yes. Thanks you, for having uh, us. I don't know if you've been on before. I have not. But nice to see you. We've, we have met, and you are uh, new to the hospital. You two have sort of taken over the hat that uh, Frank Poma used to wear, right? Is that my correct in that? That's right. That's right. Yep. Together, we are a diet leadership team. Good. Yes. That's a big title. Big yep. title. Uh, talk to me about uh, Taste Fest. It's an event that started about eight years, seven years ago, mm -hmm. eight years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. and is held annually in the lobby of the uh, St. John River District Hospital. And it's nice. What happens? So it's um, it was actually born out of at the market. Your right. program with Brian Neiman, all the the, uh, the restaurants that did the at the market got together and uh, came to do a fundraiser with us uh, to help with us, uh, our HOPE Fund and also to help the East China School District for the last couple of years in their education fund. What is the HOPE Fund? So the HOPE Fund is, and I'll let Kim talk about that. Okay. Sure, the, so the HOPE Fund, one of the mission of our hospital is to care for the poor and vulnerable in our community. Okay. And we know that sometimes folks have needs that aren't met by insurance companies or may may not have funds themselves to mm -hmm. take care of needs that they have with transportation or care that isn't covered. And so the HOPE Fund helps us meet that gap for our community, for our patients that have needs that we can help with. And uh, it's, it, anybody can use the HOPE Fund Anyone that, can needs, use the that has a need? That's correct. Anyone can use. Once the need is identified, then we go about figuring out how we're going to meet it. So for example, we had a patient who needed infusion services at home oh, okay. that weren't covered, so we were able to access the HOPE Fund to get them the care that they needed and be in their home. Okay, very good. Yes. Your uh, uh, title is uh, Vice President of Nursing and uh, Operation. Operations. So. Yes. Well, talk, talk to me about what you do. Yep, so I've been with um, St. John River District Hospital for a year now. We just had our anniversary. And I um, basically run all of the day-to-day -day operations in the hospital. Busy place. Yes, it is a busy place, yep. And responsible for all the nursing care that's delivered there as well. Um, and I work in partnership with the wonderful team that is at the hospital. Um, and Dr. Bachador and I, um, together, we, we lead the team there and um, you know, try to collaborate and make good decisions and uh, provide the best care we can for our, our it's, community. It's a fun place. It's only 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so it there's not is. a lot of things to do. We're always on. Always We're on. We're always on and always open and ready to care for you. Okay, and uh, as a person who's been in your emergency room many times and in, in the doctor's office, uh, Dr. Bachelor's office many times, I certainly appreciate the efforts and the service that you guys provide. You're very welcome, and we're proud to do it. You, young man, are now the chief medical officer. You have been, though. I have been. I have been for 12 years now, but just with more responsibility. When, when Frank left and Kim came on board, I became more involved in the hospital. I'm there for three and a half days a week and, and helping and making sure that we're providing the highest quality of care, overseeing medical staff functions, along with our chief of staff, Dr. Saeed. Uh, you just had a celebration, and I don't remember the years. How many years is the hospital? 52 now. 52 mm -hmm. now. Yeah. 65. And it started out as a community hospital. Right. It was a community authority hospital sponsored by seven communities, tax funds through the seven different communities, and then was bought eventually by St. John Hospital and Medical Center. Which is really an Providence. asset because then you've got all the services of a, of a larger organization uh, helping a smaller organization. Great economies of scale, um, sharing best practices, it really has been a great help for us. So even though we are a community hospital, we can meet all care needs just by tapping into our system, as you mentioned. We're the only faith-based system in the area, right. and it means a lot to right. us. 
Um, and we have, you know, St. John Hospital Medical Center and we have St. John McComb Center that are, you know, places that we transfer patients when the care um, needs to be delivered in a different setting. And so we have a lot of capability, even though we're a small place. If Crystal will throw up some of those pictures, we've got some pictures from the uh, Taste Fest of 2013. And we'll see some faces in there and names in there uh, that people probably will, uh, will see. And they're having fun doing that. We'll probably have to update some of those since it's now four years old. Yes, I probably should. Yeah. I probably should. But before they get those up, as they're getting them up, this Taste Fest is October the 9th from 5 to 8. It's a Monday night coming up in a couple of weeks. Only 40 bucks at the door. And you get to go around for the 18 or 20 restaurants and sample uh, wonderful, wonderful food and desserts and, and everything else. Eat till your heart's content. It yep. is a bargain for so And then there, there's baskets that are, there will be numbers of baskets that you can bid on. Just keep going through them, Crystal. Yep, yeah, super. Uh, get the little flavor of kinds of things that are available. These were baskets uh, from a couple years ago. Uh, obviously, Talmer Bank, that's changed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the setup, I think. Yep. And it's all held right yeah. in the lobby yeah. of... Uh, the hospital, there's Frank and Kathy Pizzo, Harry Krauss was there. Brian Neiman. Brian, ne Brian Neiman. Yep. And uh, as you can see is the party, there's Mr. Lockwood. He didn't have a tie on that day. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Steiner, the state Phil Senator Pavlo. Phil Pavlo, Judge, Judge Lane, uh, Lane yep. your relatives, uh, Colleen Roy Stover. Ketcher. Yep. So there's lots of, you can see it's just a, a friendly, wonderful evening. and. Uh, it uh, now we're getting into the into the food part of it. That's Tom Kephart and uh, De Deheno. Lots of pictures of uh, happy people. There's a guy. There's a happy guy yeah. there. Yeah, look at yeah, that happy guy in the middle. And here comes the food. You'll see that the food is from uh, local restaurants, and uh, they are judged in the categories of best of show, best appetizer, best entree. Best display, best dessert, and people's choice. Mm -hmm. And that's by you that are there. So uh, The people's choice. The people's choice. And, and we uh, have our judges, uh, Judge Cynthia Lane, Bob Gross from the Times-Herald, Jim Black from The Voice, and our own Bob Hoban, who's the president of St. John Hospital Medical Center look forward and to our meeting. president as well. Mm -hmm. Look so, forward to meeting him. Yeah, great guy. Well, uh, have we missed anything? No, nope. it's a great cause. We hope everyone comes out and eats to their heart's content while they're supporting their own community. Yeah, great idea. Good. I also want to throw a plug in for the Rotary Flu Shots. Oh, yes. October 7th, Saturday morning for residents of uh, East China and St. Clair. And so where East, is that at? That is at the hospital. And we're going to have, um, we're actually having a lot of activities. That It's a Saturday morning. We're going to have Safety Town, which is a uh, program for kids that's put together by Homeland Security. And then we're also going to have a health fair there as well. And that's so all Saturday. Busy, all Saturday morning. And, and then, then Monday, Monday is, is the... Will be the, a great hub of activity. Yeah, yes. yeah. we love that. Yeah. 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 Serving our community. Yeah. Good seeing Thank you, Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Coming up next, we're going to talk about whistles on the water. And that's uh, the steamship whistles. And they've made a wonderful collection of about hundreds plus of them. And we'll talk to uh, Dave Michelson about that in just a second. Welcome back, and it's always a pleasure to have this next gentleman as a guest, Mr. Dave Michelson. Welcome back, sir, to the Focus always Set. Always a pleasure to be here, Paul. You have a wonderful job once a year being the master of ceremonies in uh, rock on tour or whatever kind of word I'm looking for here. We're, uh, we're in our ninth year of madness here. Our ninth and year. Our ninth year, yes. Uh, how I could have never imagined that this would have grown into the event that it that it has. It has the, a life of its own now. Though the event we are talking about is Whistles on the Water, which was started by a group, uh, the Downtown Development Authority, I think, and a young man by the name of Dan Lockwood and Dan Al Johnson, Lockwood. Al Johnson mm -hmm. and a couple others. Yeah. And as you say, it is now going into its ninth year. Mm -hmm. And what is it? It is uh, a gathering of whistle collectors, uh, a gathering of dedicated volunteers who put on a show with a huge steam boiler expansion tank 
and manifold where we are blowing actual Great Lakes steamship whistles, factory whistles, prison whistles. All of the whistles we are blowing are large, significant whistles that were a big part of daily life a century ago. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at uh, how technology has changed, communication has changed, um, the whistle uh, really didn't, isn't necessary anymore. Uh, the closest thing now is the horn or the, uh, air, the tornado siren, for example, mm -hmm. um, for generally alerting public. Um, so the Great Lakes, uh, the last operating steam whistle on the Great Lakes was uh, used 21 years ago. Oh, my God. On a ship called the S.T. Crapo. I remember the Crapo. Uh, uh, S.T. Crapo. So um, we have an entire generation of people who have never heard a large steamship whistle. So what we do here, uh, and through the graciousness of the city of St. Clair, we are able to set up this amazing trailer of steam equipment, mount these huge steamship whistles, and give the public a truly rare opportunity and I say rare because it's one of the few places in the world that you can actually hear something like this. That's right. And it's, it's perhaps even amongst that, it's the largest gathering that we are aware of in the entire world. Uh, when is it? It is uh, Saturday, September 30th. Okay. It, uh, we run from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, down on the... Uh, a waterfront there in Palmer Park, right next to the boardwalk in St. Clair. And uh, it's, of course, free to the public. You can come and go as you please. We do offer uh, free hearing protection because if you are in the immediate area of this event, uh, you really should have hearing protection. Um, I will be providing the narration and the actual operation of the whistles my narration will be piped down the uh, boardwalk on the speaker system so that actually anywhere along the boardwalk you can hear my narration. And of course, the farther you get away, in my opinion, the better these whistles sound. Let's throw up this first picture because it takes just not you. Oh, you're an integral part heavens. of it. No, no. But no. The crew here in we have there we, a, go. we have an amazing group of dedicated volunteers. Um, this takes more than 30 people. Actually, these days we have as many as 40 people uh, um, doing this. Everything from setting up equipment, changing whistles, monitoring the boiler, uh, handing out the hearing protection, uh, providing security. Uh, because we are, uh, of course, having pe collectors' valuable whistles, we don't want one to walk away. Right, so right. We, we, we have a variety of different functions here. It's a great group of people. Uh, here we have myself uh, uh, actually blowing one of these whistles. Here we are again. Um, now, what you don't get here is the tremendous sound that's coming out of there. As you can see... Uh, um, you know, here again is one of our uh, now deceased collectors, Bill Hoy, uh, with the whistle from the uh, uh, famed uh, excursion steamer, North American. Um, here's myself. We are blowing a, uh, a large Typhon horn, a steam horn. We hmm. do a, a demonstration with uh, steam horns that came from the uh, uh, Interlake Steamship Company. Another thing that we do is as the ships are passing by in the river, we... Well, if they'll slow them down a little bit here, Chris. They exchange salutes, and uh, uh, we exchange salutes with the passing ships. The captains of the ships have a ball with us. They, <laughs> I, I have conversation with them on the radio, and they really enjoy uh, participating with us. In the background of this picture is the, is the steam 
uh, assembled. The steam boiler apparatus. Boiler apparatus. And it, you can see it stretches from one side of the picture to the other side of the picture. It's huge. And in front is the, the where you mount the uh, Well, the actually, whistle. well, those whistles there are uh, awaiting right. a, um, installation. Um, you have whistles there that vary from about four feet to six feet in height. Uh, vary in weight from about 150 up to about 300 pounds in weight. Um, there, each one of those that you see there has an amazing story to tell. That and goes you're going to tell that. And story. I tell that story to the public. Does the size of the whistle indicate the size, the sound, the the the, the, the deepness si or the hot, high pitch? Or Length indicates uh, the depth of the sound. The deeper it, the sound. The deeper the sound. It's very much like the principle of a organ, a oh, church okay. organ or okay. a theater organ, whereas the pipes get longer, the notes get deeper okay. on them. You can roll it again. There, there you are again. There I am, about to, about to be enveloped in a cloud of steam. Um, oh, there's a good shot. Okay. Now, there's a great talk, shot. Talk to us about that. There is actually a shot from the operations side of the boiler. Um, uh, incidentally, not only do we have uh, people interested in steam whistles and shipping, we do have a good number of boiler people, boiler makers, boiler operators, who come down to actually take a look and study our operation. Um, it is absolutely amazing that we have uh, such a sophisticated piece of machinery for doing nothing more than blowing steam whistles. <laughs> uh, it has to be inspected by the state of Michigan every year. Um, so it truly is a piece of industrial machinery. Um, it's used once a year. It's used once a year, <laughs> that's it. Yes. That's great, okay, next shot. Maybe? Maybe. There we go. Uh, in addition to that, well, in, in a picture here now, you can see we have some people enjoying the sounds in the garden, there's a, a picnic tent set up in the background. But in addition to that, uh, here's another picture with our volunteers changing whistles. Uh, we're saluting a passing freighter, as you can see there. Um, but one thing I want to point out is that uh, we give the public an opportunity to blow a steam whistle on their own down on the boardwalk. We'll show that in a minute here. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's again, another, another view of the assembly uh, of a very large steam whistle. Oh, look at those beautiful. Yeah, look at those lying on the ground there on display. They're sunbathing. They're sunbathing on the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and again, the amazing array of tools, fittings, and everything necessary to do this. Uh, another collector describing uh, um, uh, his particular pursuit in getting a whistle from the bottom of the lake. Um, again, another view of our uh, our steam apparatus. Beautiful uh, shot there. Of there the we Algo are. Lake. The, yes, the motor vessel Alga Lake, and I am squatting down there next to that because uh, um, that particular valve was being uh, difficult, so <laughs> I had to go over. Typically, I am blowing the whistles on a rather long lanyard mm -hmm. line, uh, staying back some distance. Um, nice locomotive whistle there. Uh, Some beautiful shots. Yes, nice shots. Here you are. Here I am giving the uh, narration. The, uh, the gospel and epistle. Yeah, another collector here. Uh, here I am operating what's referred to as a fire alarm whistle. This is what would have been in the city. Uh, it's a variable pitch whistle. Uh, so it, it really, in a lot of ways, would sound like a siren. Oh, okay. Uh, and down on the boardwalk then, we have this wonderful little manifold uh, with whistles that uh, uh, the public can come down. Oh, look at that. And here you go. And, and Bill Schwarz and one of his children. Yeah, and here we are. They, they can actually experience this. And they get their picture taken, and uh, it's presented to them in a nice folder. And um, lots of fun, lots of fun. We'll just keep rolling through these. Uh, it's, it's an, as you said, a, such a unique event. Absolutely. And uh, Al Johnson and his crew and has taken his Amazing time. Amazing people, to yes. To put 
to put together the the, the uh, mechanics of it. That that piece of equipment right there. Hold that shot for a second. I mean that that was not a cheap little thing to put together. No, uh, we Al doesn't divulge how much this actually cost him out of pocket. Um, but uh, without Al, this would have never happened. Well, I remember the first couple of years you had a uh, wood or coal burning. We had a coal-fired oh. traction engine. Here comes what you were talking about, and we'll just roll through these. Through yeah, here. yeah. This is a wonderful experience, uh, especially for children, um, because children would have n this is the only opportunity they can practically ever have to see something like this. This is great. Just beautiful. So it's uh, a lot of families, grandmas it's, it's and grandpas. It's a great event. It's a great event to to come down to downtown St. Clair. Um, you can walk around the entire downtown area. You can hear these anywhere I am, or anywhere on the boardwalk. You can hear my narration. Uh, I'm told that even the folks over in Ontario. Oh yes, they would probably hear. Can it. hear it very well. Yeah. And uh, is it your so, narration, in addition to the uh, the whistles. My narration. Well, you know they can hear the whistles. My narration, in addition to the whistles, they can hear in Canada. All right. Well, it's uh, the 30th. 30th of September. from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. And uh, we hope for another beautiful day. You've, knock on wood, you've knock had some on, good luck. Yes, work. yes. But even without that, uh, you can still put some protection on, rain protection, and, and hear the descriptions. This is, this is rain or shine. Right. This is rain or if it's, uh, if it's a rainy day, what will actually happen is the steam from the whistles will actually be much more spectacular. Really? If the atmosphere is saturated, <laughs> um, actually each time we blow the whistles, the entire crowd will probably be enveloped in a fog. Oh. So, yeah, that's... Oh, well, you don't want to that, hope that's, for rain, but... We don't want to hope for rain, but <laughs> it's, it it's a whole different experience if it is raining. There's a time of the day when you switch... Uh, the whistles. Yes. And so there's a little downtime throughout the day. So if you drive by and there's nothing happening, you just you just missed it, or it's going to something. Start. Something will be happening. Okay. Yes. So you can yes. get out and go have lunch or you can come go back. Absolutely. And, plenty of places to dine in the immediate area. Plenty of shops to look at. Um, and when you start here in the racket again, you can come out. Right. Mr. Michelson, pleasure always to have always you here. Always a pleasure. Yes, and, thank you. Uh, you've done a beautiful job of narrating for the last few years, and we salute you for that. And, and we're uh, we're looking forward to this year, and next year will be even a bigger event. That's it, folks. Two uh, two exciting events for you coming up: the uh, whistles on the water, September Saturday, September the 30th. We just talked to Dave Michelson about that, and the previous segment talking about Taste Fest, which happens on Monday. Uh, October the uh, 9th uh, at the River District Hospital. One thing we forgot to talk about was that the St. Clair Rotary raffle for a trip on a Great Lakes freighter will Ooh. be held at 4 o'clock at the Whistles on at the Water. At the Whistles on the Water. So okay. people will still have a chance to buy tickets all day long. All day long. Uh, on that uh, trip that the Rotary puts on every year. Six people can go, I understand. So that's... That's a great trip. Yep. You leave you, Detroit Edison and go up to Duluth and come back. And you can't buy one of those trips. That's no, you the can't. only way you can actually ride on a working Great Lakes freighter. Great tick for ten bucks. St. Clair Rotary, another doing another fine job here in St. Clair and, and the environs. That's about it for this edition of the Focus Program. Thanks very much for tuning in. Until next time, Paul Dingaman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.